From KGW, this is Friday Night Flights with Orlando Sanchez, sponsored by Carl's Jr. It is so good to be back. What's good, everyone? My name is Orlando Sanchez, and we are ready for another season of Friday Night Flights. We start technically with the last state champions in Oregon and Washington. An abbreviated 2020 season means Central Catholic and Canis still hold their crowns. We're Central Catholic and you're watching Friday Night Flights. That's how you do it and start a show. Central Catholic ranked number one in the OSAA coaches poll and they looked the part. Crew Newman, 60 plus yards to Strider Todd Fields. Just like that, Rams up 21-3. Camus strikes back later in the third. Luke Jamison navigates all that humanity. Camus cuts the lead to 21-9. Central Catholic though, clinches it in the fourth quarter. Newman and Zach Blair hook up to put this game away. Central Catholic holds off the papermakers 28-17. Next up, the first of four top 10 matchups in week number one. Second ranked Westland opening the season at fourth ranked Jesuit. Playoff type matchup right out of the gate. You gotta love it. Let's pick things up in the third quarter. Chase Harmon bombs away. Mark Hamper was popping. 51 yard touchdown. Westland heating up, leading 10 to three. Fourth quarter we go and the Lions are at it again. Harmon's got options, sharing the wealth there to Wiley Donnerberg for six. Wes Lynn takes care of business on opening night, winning 17-3. Eighth ranked Tiger hosting number nine Sunset, picking up right where they left off a year ago, second quarter. Good field position here for Grady Newsom to Aiden Timbo and the senior making the dive for the pylon. Sunset sending a message to the rest of the state early, winning 48 to six. The Metro League champs looking strong again. Here's another top 10 matchup. 10th ranked Mountainside visiting fifth ranked Lake Oswego. The Lakers mascot, that's Pilot Joe. And you know we had to put him on TV. This was all Lake Oswego, only scorer of the second half right here. Jake Lane to a wide open, Justice Lowe stays on his feet and he's into the end zone. This was an emotional night for Lake Oswego. First game since assistant coach Brian Barsh passed away. He had been with the program since 2004. Lake Oswego opens with a 40 to seven win over Mountainside. Let's go across the lake to Lake Ridge. The Pacers hosting the Sherwood Bowman. The Pacers fired up for their first game of the season and they got off to a great start. Jake Reichel with the rock. Oh, and he's breaking something proper. Right down the sideline for the score to get the Pacers on the board. Doesn't stop there either. Ethan by and dime powers his way in from a couple yards out. Lake Ridge raced to a big lead, then cruised for the 42-21 win. Aloha visiting Liberty. This highlight goes out to the Liberty defense. Third quarter, Hunter Gerard looking to pass, but oh, he's hit as he throws. Cade Hammond, right place, right time, and he knows what to do. In for six. Go ahead, do some high stepping. You earned it, man, but you also earned that flag. The Falcons win big, 56-0. Let's head south to Hare Field. Glencoe Crimson Tide hosting Sheldon. And this one was close. Third quarter, Crimson Tide in the red zone. Royce Fazel, the senior, calling his own number. The Tide tied up at 21. This would be a back and forth type of night, but Sheldon just a little too strong. They get a 36-29 W on the road. Oh yeah, your game of the week is back. Your votes took me to Washougal. The Panthers hosting the Prairie Falcons. Let's go. Thank you to the thousands who voted. Prairie and Washougal community always show out. And it was good to be back on the field. Falcons went to their bread and butter delivering a steady dose of ground and pound. Alex Ford, he's just too smooth. Prairie's defense smothered the Panthers. They were determined to keep them from scoring. Israel Duncan, a man on a mission. 
Wash Ugal just trying to get something going in the second half. But there's Thor Stepina in the back of the end zone for the interception. And with a name like Thor, you know he wasn't done. This time with a big play, we got ourselves a house call. 73 yard touchdown. Prairie makes a statement on opening night with the victory. 44-6, your final. Let's head over to McKenzie Stadium. Yet another matchup of top 10 teams. The Union Titans ranked second in the AP Top 10 for 4A. Hosting Washington's top 3A team, the O'Day Fighting Irish. McKenzie Stadium, the place to be for this titanic matchup. We open things up in the third quarter. Union's offense cooking. Dominic Coletto hits Tobias Merriweather, and it is showtime. Once he gets some space, no one can catch him. The Notre Dame commit scored a couple of touchdowns in this game. Titans then go for two. Coletto to Corey Bozovich. That cut the deficit to three. But O'Day has some beasts on the roster, including sophomore running back Jason Brown. The man feasted. O'Day rolls 35 to 17 victory. We've got a little history in Happy Valley. Sky 8 over the brand new Nelson High School. The Nelson Hawks jumping right into the fire, hosting Barlow in their first ever game. The Hawks taking the field with some energy, and why not? However, the Bruins went to work early and often. Jake Fay right up the middle, finds the gray turf in the end zone. I'm told that is worth six points. Later, Quarterback Gavin Doe gets in on the fun, takes the keeper for the score. Barlow spoils the Hawks debut 41-0 in Happy Valley. Last stop, Franklin High School, the Lightning hosting the South Albany Red Hawks. Nice crowd on hand. And the Lightning strike early. First quarter, Xander Garner. Time to throw Beckett Parker Lisk. Oh, that pivot's too nice. But the Red Hawks get a nice win on the road. 21-14, your final.